Anyone who's been to Times Square knows it's a nightmare to navigate, whether you're on foot or whether you're in a taxi cab. It was easier to get around Times Square, where the Pope was actually speaking at Madison Square Garden, than it has been to get around in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He's the only person here. There's no UN here. There's no Obama here. But they shut down the city more for one man than they did for Obama or for the UN up in New York. It's been completely ridiculous. Well, you got Philadelphia, you got Penn State nearby. I mean, this is the pedophile command base, so they know how to keep the the uh, king 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 PDP uh, safe. Yeah, it's, I, I'd really like for them to actually prosecute some of these guys. I was reading some of the quotes from the Pope. He said uh, something like, "We're going to observe the situation" or something along those lines. Like, no, how about we're going to prosecute? these guys who have done these crimes, put people into these prisons because they don't need to be in these dioceses doing these harm, doing such harm to children. Of course, it's not all people, but the people they know who are guilty, why aren't these people in these prisons, Alex? Well, it's, it's a large contingent. I mean, they took over, and a lot of other institutions have been taken over by these people. It's just crazy. Well, Jakar, you've been on the road six days. Great job. You looking forward to getting back to Austin? Yeah, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to sleeping in my own bed. It's going to be a welcome a welcome change of pace. Well, I know David's going to take off a week, and you're welcome to take off as well. We're kind of a skeleton crew. We'll miss you, Jakari. But how much time are you planning to take off, Jakari? Oh, uh, one or two days. I'll be back. Uh, it's awesome to have you around. I'm glad you're addicted to fighting tyranny. Great job. 30 seconds left. Anything else? Yes, I would like to just end with this note. As far as all the things that have happened while the Pope has been visiting here, the thing that bothered me the most is when he said Christ failed on the cross. And I did a report earlier in the day people can go and look at it while I reference certain scriptures. But Christ didn't fail on the cross. He knew he was going to die on the cross, and he said, I'm giving myself willingly. So I was very disturbed to hear something like that. He come said out that? I didn't know that. Pope. That was Christ's oh, yeah. ultimate triumph. Yeah, and he said he failed on the cross. As the ABC News, I'm sure it's on multiple Sounds like something the devil well. would say, Jakari. I, I thank you. There is a reign of terror, not just here in the United States, but across the world against free speech. I remember growing up watching the news, reading the newspaper 35 years ago, 20 years ago. I remember first being on air 20 years ago and seeing mainstream media criticize communist China for restricting free speech, for arresting political dissidents, for setting up political dissidents, for doing white glove inspections of the businesses of free market, pro-America political dissidents. And our government and our media would rightfully criticize China harvesting political dissidents organs, uh, Chinese spies in our government, things like that. And that's just one example. But in the past 15 years or so, our media has stopped criticizing political persecution around the world, unless it's in Russia. And there's some of that going on in Russia. And, and we criticize it here as well. But if you look at Lois Lerner auditing, harassing tens of thousands of different Christian, conservative, libertarian, veteran, pro-gun groups, you name it, anything right of Mao Zedong, if you look at the different Republican governors that have been indicted and the Texas Attorney General indicted and uh, Dinesh D'Souza, the filmmaker, for getting five of his friends to donate to a political campaign, he didn't fault the right paperwork, indicted, nine months in prison, huge fines. And you look at no tax exemption authorizations issued in the last five years to conservative groups, only one, and over Again, 12,000 total issued to Democrats and liberals and socialists. They're using regulations. They're using the power of the state to shut down all political speech that doesn't agree with them. And the Republicans are intimidated. They're blackmailed. They're bullied into it. The great news this week is that we saw John Boehner step down. A Tea Party rebellion in the House a vacate the chair vote that we helped push on Twitter and Facebook with Congressman Walter Jones, who spearheaded it. He joined us Friday. You, the listeners of this show, help put the heat on Boehner to make him resign on Friday. Boehner, who promoted Obamacare, gun control, open borders, uh, to protected Obama on Fast and Furious, and so many other crimes in Benghazi. He's gone. There's now a leadership fight, and no one from his leadership group, not McCarthy, not any of them, should be in there. And we'll be promoting in the next few weeks who Congressman Jones and others believe will be the best for the leadership.
Ted Cruz also in the Senate supported the move along with Rand Paul to get rid of Boehner. So we've got good people who don't want to destroy this country who are in Congress and who are leading and having an effect. Obama is incredibly unpopular. The Democrats are incredibly unpopular. The rhinos, Republican in name only, are very unpopular. But what we're seeing here is a massive criminal pushback against those of us that are calling to not arm Syria and rebels like Al-Qaeda and ISIS. You're seeing a massive pushback in Europe against mainline Germans that don't want open borders or to pay for all these uh, illegal immigrants. You're seeing them get 120 days in jail, no judge, no jury, 5,000 euro fines. We've got an article up on Infowars.com. Anti-ISIS artwork banned from free speech event after outcry from London police. We'll show TV viewers the artwork. It's those little foxes and bunny rabbits you buy at Michael's or other art supply stores dressed up having a picnic happy. And here comes ISIS over the hill with their machine guns and their Al-Qaeda flag. And the police, quote, banned the event or said you've got to pay 36,000 pounds or $55,000 for us to protect you if you have this event. That's how they end free speech. And now the UN has come out and said ban any speech criticizing feminism in any way. That's Breitbart. The UN wants to censor the entire internet to quote, save feminist feelings. And on major universities, they're telling people any criticism of cultural Marxism, you will be kicked off, you will be given academic suspension or probation. And I even know people this is happening, too, in Austin, Texas. I mean, they are moving with totalitarianism right now. And now we are seeing the Federal Trade Commission and the SEC are in the news this week announcing they have jurisdiction over the Internet, not just the FCC that just declared it this year. And that they're going to censor anybody they feel like. So it's on. And I wanted to bring you Joe Bannister, who media, uh, media bypass first interviewed him. And then I went and interviewed him in California while I was covering Operation Urban Warrior, a big martial law drill in 99. And he had just resigned from the Treasury Department, an armed agent of the IRS who did raids on people. A lot of them were bad criminals. But the point is, he had a great career. His whole family's basically in law enforcement. He hears a radio show, just recapping, claiming that the IRS is a fraud and that the Federal Reserve is private. He doesn't believe it. Spends two years investigating it. Finds out it's true, goes to his superiors, and they say just resign. Then they indicted him and took him to trial multiple times for his free speech. It was in the San Francisco Chronicle with a straight face. You know, former Treasury agent faces years in jail for telling people that the you know, Federal Reserve's private. This is what they do. But the jury saw him, heard him, and the system was defeated. Now, InfoWars, I've learned from two different FBI sources and another source, has an entire white-collar task force under Obama's orders for two years digging into us, looking for anything they can get. That didn't work, so now they've gone to the Federal Trade Commission and are trying to find something to come after us. And the thing is, if the feds come after you, they'll go ahead and just make stuff up. Thank God juries and people now know that the government's so criminal, you can't... I mean, I had a high-level Texas judge, because I went and Googled his name after he stopped me on the street, go, you know, Alex, I used to think you were a cook, but we saw it all come out with Lois Lerner. They really are targeting conservatives, libertarians, and Christians. They really are setting them up. They really are doing this. What are you... Have you been assaulted? Have you been attacked? And I was like, yeah, I've had... Um, EEOC made up stuff. I've had uh, IRS stuff. I've had state stuff. And man, these people just show up shaking with hate. But they can't believe they're even here. And I'm just, I just go, well, you're here to persecute us. Go ahead. Your karma must be really good. And they can't ever find anything. And I haven't made a big deal about it on air because, you know, they want to intimidate everybody. That's what they're trying to do. But we got the fox, the wolves circling the camp here. 
I mean, of course, I expect this. <laughs> they think it scares me or intimidates me. I suddenly went from being exhausted when I learned about this this week, from the third source, basically, to just just, just incredible energy. Uh, I'm so blessed to be in this position, to be able to stand up against these evil people, to be able to reach tens of millions of people a day now, uh, that it's just a blessing from God. But I immediately thought about Joe Bannister, who was successful, doing great, a family man, children, going up to the ranks, a CPA, and then having to lose his job for his conscience, and then they came after him even more. But then he went through the fire. He went through the fiery furnace. He went through the lion's den. And, and I was just thinking, I can't feel sorry for myself. I want to fight tyranny. We are fighting tyranny. Th those little babies can't fight those scalpels. You've seen the baby alive. They pull out of the womb to harvest. It's fighting the scalpel with its little hand. We're standing up for those children, folks. What do we expect from these killers? I'm a grown man who's smart and has energy and has friends and has capital. And I went and investigated the FTC heads. I already knew what I'd see before I did it. All Democrats appointed by Obama. One of them's former Biden chief advisor, Obama advisor. I mean, this is who I've, this is, a, this is an honor. Biden's got his other son over there running the takeover of the gas pipelines and making billions in, in, in Ukraine. I mean, this is just a bunch of seedy people. So they want to go up against me? Good. You got the full faith and credit of the rotten, evil federal government behind you? I got the full faith and credit of God behind me who empowered George Washington. 1776. I love it. We'll be back with Joe Bannister. We've got Joe Bannister with us on the line. We're going to go to this American hero here in a moment. As I said, just recant. Say that the IRS is good, that the Federal Reserve is good, and we'll leave you alone. He said, no, I'm not going to. Well, we're going to put you in prison. This is how evil the people are that work in this government. But others are just cowards. They just are scared. They want their paycheck. They'll do anything for it. We've interviewed a lot of firefighters, including senior ones, who saw the bombs going off, heard the countdown to blow up World Trade Center 7 on 9-11. And they, they'll say, I waited till I retired so they wouldn't take my pension. And I appreciate their courage. They've got more courage than most. But they'll say almost all the firefighters know it was bombs, but they're scared to say it. It's like I had a Hollywood guy on. I was criticizing George Soros for being a Nazi collaborator. And the Hollywood person, I'm not going to say his name to put him down. He said, um, but Alex, the, the Nazis would have killed him. Well, I mean, you could put a gun to my head and say, go round up women and children for us. We're going to kill you. Pull the damn trigger then. I mean, I just don't get this go along with evil because everybody's so scared. I was thinking about everybody persecuted by this alien force that's taken over the federal government. This isn't the Vatican doing all this. This isn't Catholics. It's been taken over. That's even in mainstream news. It's blackmailed. This isn't the federal government. It's globalist. It's a corporate takeover. Internet progeny activist Aaron Swartz was mad that a major university had 50-year-old stuff on it. They hadn't released the public, so he grabbed it off their server and put it out to the public. And so they were going to put him in prison for life. And then he, quote, committed suicide. Folks, they killed him better than a hammer. He, he had just gotten, was getting married. He said he was going to beat the, uh, the indictment. He was going to be a cause celeb. He was going to fight it. He got super lawyers. And the feds knew they couldn't beat him, so they took him and they hung him by the neck until dead. That's what they do. Well, here's the deal. I have transcended you. I'm not afraid. Whatever happens, if I'm destroyed, I win. If I defeat the globalist, I win. I will not stand here as the innocent or persecuted and attacked anymore. For the balance of the hour, he joins us, Joe Bannister. Freedom Above Fortune is the name of his website, and he's, of course, written books on the subject of what he faced. Most of our listeners know who he is, uh, but he is a true person who faced uh, major political repercussions and fought through it. Many of the IRS Treasury agents and agents that spoke out and signed letters in USA Today with full-page ads were promptly indicted and are in federal prison right now. Uh, so this is the reign of evil in the so-called free country we live in. And they think you're cowards. They think we're doing their job here covering all this. That You'll just crawl under a rock because you're scared. You should be scared of not standing up. Not standing up got us here. America was special because we did stand up. We weren't perfect, but we were one of the freest countries in history because we did stand up. Acting like jellyfish brings the criminals. Criminals don't hit hard targets. They, they hit soft targets. Joe Bannister, thank you for joining us. I want to get your take just on general persecution, the IRS scandal, all of them getting away with it, just the incredible crimes and where you see this nation going. 
Hi, Alex. Well, hey, thanks for having me. Um, always 